Welcome back, everybody. This is another episode of the Sikkim 365 Baseball Podcast, and today I'm joined by Coach Mitch Thompson. Coach, thank you for being here. Great to be here. Thanks, Levi. And so um, this past week, Faith did a great interview with Coach um, that's on our website and on YouTube, Dear Sports Podcast, where he kind of talked about Coach coming back to Baylor and kind of some of his philosophies as a person and whatnot. Today is going to be a little more baseball-focused, and so I'm sure Coach is excited to talk about actually things that are going to be on the field. And so we'll start with, uh, we'll start with Blake Helton. What is a guy like that? mean to the team that's going to set the tone every Friday night? Yeah. Um, you know, you want your Friday night starter to be a guy that's going to go out and keep you in a game and and be consistent and go out there and, uh, you know, get you five or six innings as possible. You know, maybe that won't work this first week, first week as we're still in pitch count situations. But you want your guy to go out there who can keep you in the game, keep from burning up your bullpen, um, you know, when you're playing Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, the guys you use in the bullpen on Friday really affect you on Saturday and Sunday. So um, you, you, you need to have somebody that can go out there and throw multiple pitches and do that. And Blake, Blake's obviously been that guy for us this fall. Blake's, uh, you know, an extremely mature kid with, his, uh, you know, a lot of experience and, uh, you know, a really talented arsenal of pitches. He's got good stuff and, and uh so he's he's the guy that's kind of earned that earned that job for us, and we're expecting him to get off to a good start and try and try and be that guy for us. Mm-hmm. And when you first took the job, how important was it to bring Blake Helton back? Yeah, it's important. Uh, and, you know, I was trying to bring back as many players as I could. You know, I mean, I, not knowing exactly what we were going to have and what we were going to keep, I was trying to keep them all mm-hmm. um, because it's a uh, it's a difficult prospect to try and recruit an entire new team starting Jan- June fifteenth, and uh, you're cranking it up so. Uh, it was important to get Blake here. I've known him since he was in high school, um, and I, you know, I know I know that he's getting healthy. He's he's healthy, and everything's been good for him here. So it's a, uh, uh, I'm I'm excited to have Blake back. He's been a good leader for us. And right now, who do you kind of have slotted as the Saturday and Sunday guys? Yeah, right now, if we're starting this weekend, it's probably going to be Cam Cayley, uh, the left-hander. Will probably go on Saturday right now, and then Mason Marriott on Sunday is kind of the idea. Um, you know, those guys. Uh, both have good arms. Both have, have have been out there before, different levels of experience, different different levels of success. But uh, those are the guys that you know throughout the fall kind of earn those opportunities, and that's that's where we're going to start with. And both of those guys kind of last year struggled to throw strikes consistently. So you have trust in them. Yeah, they've done a better job. I mean, Cam's Cam has been pretty pretty doggone consistent all fall, and and Mason's Mason's same way. There's been a little ups and downs with that, but. Uh, but, you know, really talented arm, and uh, and we're expecting good things out of them. I mean, you know, uh, you know, uh, whoever 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 starts the season in the rotation doesn't always end the season in the rotation. It's just a work in progress as you go, and uh, you know, uh, we're gonna we're gonna see how our team fits best uh, when we're starting off. This is how we're gonna probably start off, and this is what we're thinking, and, and we think that those guys have earned those rights. And so, kind of as speaking for the bullpen, who are some guys that have really stood out to you? Yeah, um, you know, I, I I like I like that we have some depth. We've got quality arms. We've got guys who can run a fastball up there over ninety. Uh, multiple guys that can do that. We have guys who can, you know, throw some decent, really good change ups. We have some guys who can really spin a breaking ball, um, and so they can they can all fit into their roles. Uh, you know, I would say that Andrew Petrowski will be a guy out of the bullpen for us that's got got a nice arm. Um, I'd say Cole Stasio has got a nice arm, uh, throws strikes, multiple pitches. Um, I think Grant Galome uh, ha- has has a role, and Kobe Andrade and Brett Graves and and uh, and and Blake Rogers, the freshman from California, I think will play play an interesting role. You know, throughout the fall, he's been he's been he's been good and filling up the strike zone with multiple pitches, and you know so. Um, you know, everybody will grow that first time out, and we'll start to figure it all out as to who's going to be your seventh inning guy or your eighth inning guy or who's your closer and what's our best fit here. And um, and we can have those ideas right now, but they're really just ideas until we get out there and we see how guys handle it under, under the lights once they cross the white line. Yeah, and so Blake Rogers has really impressed me kind of throughout the fall and spring. And he's a freshman, so you don't really know what you're going to get when he steps across those lines. And so how do you navigate that balance of – Going with the veteran guys you think you can trust versus getting the freshmen some playing time. Well, the good news is is that you know, I mean, on the mound, you're you're going to get your guys out there. I mean, uh, you know, there there should be no pressure 
you're, you're going out there to compete and give us your best effort today. And, and uh, if, if you have success, then awesome. Mm-hmm. If you, if you struggle, you got to put it behind you quick. You know, one of the things I think is important is that, is that pitchers for sure, but, but position players too, you've got to have short memories and, and you've got to learn to uh, keep your highs low and your lows high and move on. You know, I mean, we, you, you, you play great on Friday and you go out and stink on Saturday Saturday's game's gonna make you feel really bad, you know. And so you gotta you gotta learn to to keep you know you can't pat yourself on the back for too long because mm-hmm. you got another ball game to play. The beauty of baseball is you wake up the next day and you play a lot. Mm-hmm. The bad thing about baseball is you don't get to pat yourself on the back when things go well very often. Mm-hmm. So you got to move on and, uh, and 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 you know guys will be learning how to do that and making adjustments as it as well. And we'll have to do that as well as coaches. Mm-hmm. And so kind of on those midweek games on Tuesdays, mostly Tuesdays, do you have a particular game plan for those games? Well, I mean, every Tuesday is important, you know. Uh, you know, to, to, to get to win a regional tournament, you're going to do it on Sundays. To get into a regional tournament, every Friday, Saturday, Sunday is really important, but the Tuesday games are important too. And so, um, you know, uh, our, our plan will be to throw the best guy out there to start that game. You know, and throughout the year, you'll be developing your 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 fourth starter, so that when you do get into a regional tournament, you do get into a conference mm-hmm. tournament, you know who that guy is for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, with without every role being a hundred percent solidified, which it never is. I mean, I don't care if you return your entire ball club; it's not, and it's for sure it's not when you have a first year coach and and you return. You know, uh, you know. Not, not as many guys as you might like, you know. Uh, so so we, we, we've got a young ball club. We've got a, a, an inexperienced ball club. Everything is going to be new for us, but that's exciting. Mm-hmm. When Will Rigney comes back, do you have a kind of an <coughs> idea of what he's going to be doing? Well, Will will be doing a starting role probably mm-hmm. if we can, we can get him back, and we're expecting good things out of that. Everything's going well. Will's, Will's coming right along, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting him to be back with us sooner rather than later, and that'll be exciting for us because he's a, he bring another veteran presence to our to to the mound for us. Yeah, do you think he's going to be like 100% right out the gate, or he'll kind of have to start on Tuesday? <laughs> well, we're not going to throw him unless he's 100%. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you're not 100%, I'm not putting the kid out there and, and screwing up his arm. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, he's coming – He's coming off some injuries in the past, and, and he's rehabbing well, and everything looks great, and he feels good, and uh, we're going to bring him along at the right time frame, and when he's right and he's 100% we feel good about it, then we'll bring him out and start playing it. And whenever that is, that is. So, yeah. you know, if we have to wait three or four weeks, we wait three or four weeks. If we've got to wait a week, we wait a week. Mm-hmm. And uh, But I'm excited for Will, and I'm excited from what I'm seeing from him. He'll be a valuable piece for us. Yeah, and kind of moving on, with, with do you have any two-way <laughs> players that you're expecting to be able to contribute on both sides? You know, interesting, uh, we have several two-way players. I mean, uh, several guys who play outfield for us and also swing the bat. Um, you know, I think probably uh, uh, Kobe Andrade and possibly Cam Cayley will do that, you know, for us. And you'll see them swing the bat and be in a lineup on one day and then pitch another day. Um, you know, Cayley, Cayley's an interesting situation for us. He, you know, he, he's got the ability to swing a bat. He's got the ability to play offense. But, man, if you you screw up and you get your – one of one of your weekend starters hurt sliding mm-hmm. in the second, mm-hmm. and you got you know that's that, that really hurts your ball club. So we'll have to we'll have to figure that all out. But I, I'm a big believer in two way guys. I like guys who, who who can both pitch and hit. I've seen it happen year after year after year here previously, and we've had some great ones. And so if a guy can do that and help us, then we're going to do that. Cole Tremaine is also an outfielder that pitches some for us right handed. It's an outfielder that does it, and, and then Ethan Calder as well. So. Mm-hmm. We've got several guys that we can do that with, and you might see them do a little bit of both. Yeah, and so kind of moving into the into the field now, we have a there's going to be a lot of underclassmen that you have to play. Who are some of the guys that you're really looking forward to seeing getting out there? Yeah, no, position player wise, we're young and we're inexperienced, you know, and that's just the way it is. I mean, uh, we return one position player starter, uh, you know, from the team, and and uh, we return uh, you know two home runs. So we're young, we're inexperienced. Uh, it's going to be exciting to see these guys come out and compete and see how we can fit them all together. Uh, you know, uh, position player wise, there's several guys that I'm excited to see. I think that uh, I think a couple young guys are going to be, be 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 fan favorites. You know, soon, and 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 I think we've got some some other guys that are uh, you know coming into their own. Uh, I like our I like our middle infield. I think. Uh, Austin Straysner and, and, and Colby Branch bring a lot to the table there for us. I think they're going to play solid defense and can give us good athletic 
um, you know, approaches at the plate and, and, and hopefully give us good ABs. I like Hunter Toplansky and Will Pendergrass and Casey Newman and Johnny Sicoli in the corner infield. They've all had good, good moments for us in the fall, and we're expecting them to continue on. Um, you know, in the outfield, Cole Posey's an interesting guy. He can play both infield and outfield. It gives me lots of flexibility with a lineup. Danny Altman's the exact same way. A guy transferred from McLennan can play infield, outfield. Gives us a left-handed bat. Um, you know, behind the plate, uh, we talked about Harrison Cayley and, 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 and Court Castle probably are, have, have separated themselves a little bit and are going to catch the majority of, of the games, I would think, as we start. Um you know, Zach Mazok has done okay back there as well as a freshman. Um, and other outfielders, Hunter Simmons and, and Gavin Brzezowski, you know, both first-year guys here. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so all those guys that I just named, I mean, how many how many have been here on the ball club yeah. before? You know, so it's a, you know, while it's a new thing for, for us as coaches, it's a new thing for the players, it'll be a new thing for our fans, and it'll be a new thing for our opponents because – they're not gonna. They're not gonna know what they what they're facing a whole lot until uh, until we get into this thing a little bit. Yeah. Do you think? Um, who do you think is the most talented guy that nobody knows about? I don't know. Uh, you know, that's a tough question, and that's that's a. You know, uh, I, if they don't know about him, I'm not sure I want to let them. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure I want to let them know what yeah. I think on that yet either. Uh, but I think we've got guys that are going to get people's attention, and I think we've got guys that are going to turn into uh, really good players that have, you know, two, three, four years of eligibility left that are going to be really nice Division One players. Yeah, and you obviously know this being at MCC for so long. How Hunter Simmons hit – 350, 400 at the JUCO level. How does that necessarily translate? Into these well, games? I don't think it really does. And and I'll tell you, you know, one of the reasons that I don't think it does, I, I mean, I think he's a talented kid, but yeah. hitting 350, 400 at, at the Division One level makes you – you hit 350, 400, you're in the All-American category, you know. You put up 50, 50 RBIs and 16 home runs, whatever, 18 home runs, you're an All-American. Um uh, you know, in junior college baseball and in, in, in different different states, they're playing different different formats. And you know, um, you're usually playing a doubleheader, so you'll play a doubleheader maybe on Wednesday and Saturday, or or in some conferences, you're playing a doubleheader on Saturday and Sunday. Well, you can imagine on Saturday and Sunday doubleheader four games, mm-hmm. really taxing on a pitching staff. Yeah. So, you know, you're going deep into pitching stats, mm-hmm. and sometimes numbers get elevated from that. I'm facing mm-hmm. guys that I do beat beat up pretty good mm-hmm. um but hunter's a hunter's a talented kid and he's got the ability to hit a ball out of the ballpark and uh i think he's going to be a gamer and a competitive guy and so i'm anxious to see him get out there and get going yeah i think last year something the fans really were having a hard time kind of watching was there just no power on the team do you think that's kind of started to change with this roster well i think it's going to continue to improve mm-hmm. i mean uh you know, I don't think that we're going to be a ball club that's just going to stand up there and, and drive okay. balls out of the yard, hit four or five home runs a game. I don't mm-hmm. think that that's probably where we're at. I think we've improved a lot since we got here in the fall. But I think that this is going to have to be a club that's a gritty, hard-nosed, run the bases, play the game, draw the walk, start the runners, be able to bunt, mm-hmm. you know, play the game. Uh, and, and that'll be a fun game to play. Uh, but I think our power will – continue to improve but again when you're when you're so inexperienced and so new and and really you know I mean we may start you know we may start sophomore at third sophomore at at at, at short mm-hmm. uh freshman is at second uh sophomore junior at, at third at first base you know I mean there's just not there's no there's no senior bell cows there's no no nobody like that though you know here here's a guy in our lineup that's done hit 15 home runs and sitting in the middle of your lineup it's not not happened yet yeah I think we have some guys that'll turn into those guys mm-hmm. as they continue to develop and so I'm anxious to see them get started as a coach is it like exciting like <coughs> oh I see their potential what they could be or is it like is it frustrating like because they're gonna have their ups and downs being so young this oh year. yeah no there's gonna be there's gonna be uh mm-hmm ups and downs and you know i mean handling adversity in this game's so big um you know how are you going to handle it when you strike out and look terrible your first at bat does it carry over to the bat at bat number two or are you able to put it behind you and so there's growing up to do um but it, there's growing up to do with every college team in the country it is exciting to kind of see the potential that i think these guys have to see how they can continue to grow into players 
They've been very coachable. They're working really hard. They're pushing each other. We have great competition on the field. You know, I mean, we probably have two or three guys that I feel really comfortable with that, hey, I'm going to be penciling them in the lineup every day. And we probably got another 8, 10, 12 that are in that mix that one day they're good and the next day it's not as consistent. And so I'm, I'm looking for a little more consistency. But what that's going to mean is we're going to be continue to give guys opportunities. And, uh, you know, the guy who consistently gives us the quality at-bats and makes the routine play routinely is probably going to get a chance to play and give us a chance to – to hopefully be in the ball games and win some games. Mm-hmm. And so speaking of team identity, like, do you want that blue collar attitude to be? No question. I think the toughness factor is a huge factor in the game of baseball and, uh, and having a blue collar mentality and having some grit and fire, uh, energy is important. Uh, I'm going to want our guys to play extremely hard. I'm going to want our guys to be the team that when you fly out to the outfield, you know, you're running to first base, like your hair's on fire. You know, uh, I want our team to be the team that when the opposing pitcher throws a ball in the dirt, we're taking that uh, that we're taking that extra base. We're always looking for the extra base. We're pushing things, and so as long as we're in the game, we're going to be aggressive. We're going to run. We're going to attack. Um, you know, if we're not in the game, we're playing big time catch up. Then we got to slow down and play big time catch up and hit our way back in. But. Uh, I, you know, I, I like the mentality of the club. They're coming together. Yeah, so that's going to give the team an identity and fans something to look forward to watching. Well, I think the, the fun thing for the fans is going to be seeing these guys continue to develop. You know, I think for I think back in previous years when, uh, you know, when we were building the ballpark, when we were, we, were, we were here the first time, you know, who knew when John Topolsky was playing as a freshman that John Topolsky was going to be the career leader in so many different categories. Yeah. You didn't know. Nobody knew, you know. How, who knew he was going to hit more home runs than anybody that ever played the game here? Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? Uh, you're going to get an early look at some guys that are going to be around for several years, and, uh, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be an exciting time. I mean, this is going to be a work in progress. We're going to go out and try and win every game we play. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're probably not going to. We're probably not going to go 56-0, and 0, so we're going to have to, you know, keep our patience about us, keep our wits about us, and and as always, it's – you know, for me and for our program, it's always going to be about the players. It's going to be about developing the kids. And if we'll develop every kid to their fullest potential, in effect, we'll develop our team. And having a first-year coaching staff and so many young players, how important is having 36 home games this season? I think it's huge for our ball club, and I'm really excited to have 18 of the first 21 here. Yeah, um, We're at least going to be comfortable. We're mm-hmm. going to be in a position where we can – we can get our feet underneath us, figure it out a little bit, and then sleep in our own beds and come to the yard that we know, and, and those are good. And as we continue to grow, then we'll, we'll have to learn to be, be comfortable being uncomfortable as we continue to you know go into different venues and travel and do all that. But uh, I'm excited for the schedule. I think 36 games at home is, is huge for the fans. I think it's huge for our players. Um, and I'm, I was excited about it. I think we're playing a challenging schedule with teams that are going to push us and really challenge us and, and it sometimes maybe give us more than we want, but that's good. That's how you grow too. So mm-hmm. um, I like where we're at and what we got. Yeah, and so I'll interject right here. For anybody looking at the schedule, seeing Central Michigan and laughing, they made the tournament last year and they're a good team. They made the tournament the last two years, yeah. a really good team. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, a really good team. Team go toe-to-toe with University of Florida yeah. in the regional yeah. tournaments and – yeah, they're, shoot, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping they come out of the gym and, you know, it's straight out of the gym to, the, to playing. But, mm-hmm. hey, you know, uh, one, of their, one of their coaches is one of my college teammates and I know who he is and I know what he's about. And uh, watching that program and the success that they've had, yeah, not your typical name for college baseball, Central Michigan, but I'm going to tell you what, anybody that knows anything about the game knows they're, they're really competitive and been really competitive for a long, long time. Yeah really rich tradition with really well-coached teams. So uh, they'll, they'll be a really good challenge early. Yeah, and so kind of with the schedule farther in, is it kind of exciting to have Texas, OU at home? Because those will be a big series. Yeah, well, it's, always, it's always great to have those guys, you know, at home. I, you'd always rather play them at home than on the yeah. road, right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, you know, this conference is a really good conference, and it's a challenge every week. And it doesn't matter who you're playing from the top to the bottom. I mean uh, – you know, you're going to face talented people and you better show up to play. So um, I like our schedule. I'm excited about our, our conference schedule. We do have OU in Texas here, back-to-back weekends. And, 
you know, probably the middle part of the of the schedule uh, around Easter time, and and so that'll be fun when the weather starts to get a little mm-hmm. bit better sometimes. But we're going to need fans to come out and support us right off the bat. Mm-hmm. I mean, 50, 50 to sixty degrees. We, we throw on the coat, throw on the jacket. <laughs> let's go. We we're going to need you out at the ballpark. Yeah. And so on a closing note, what do you have to say to the fans and the people who are going to? Just really, it? we're really excited. I'm really excited to be back. I can't wait to see the ballpark full again. I can't wait to see as this program continues to grow, and uh, you know, and I'm proud of our kids. I'm proud of I'm proud of our coaches and who we have here, the people that we have. I'm proud of how we're 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 moving these guys along. We're developing them. We're helping them grow. Um, you know, um, but there's going to be ups and downs, and so get on, get on board, and let's go for the ride. And I, I, I think that when we're finished with the entire ride, whether that's at the end of this year, you know, this ride that uh, that that we're on, and you know, we're going to be excited. I, I want this program to be a regional tournament program year after year after year again, and I think we can do that. And so, um, I'm excited to get started. Awesome. Well, thank you, Coach. Next Friday, opening day. 3 p.m. against Central Michigan. So at Baylor Ballpark, it's an exciting time. Thanks, Levi. Appreciate the fans. Sick them.